All right, so thank you for coming to the very last session of this podcast. <laughs> um, well, this session is about uh, next CS for Drupal. Um, we'll be talking about what is this and why next, why Drupal. <laughs> so, yeah, let's see. Well, my name is Ronald Aguilar. I am a Drupal and React developer working for Chapter 3. I'm from Costa Rica and making the web since uh, the 2000s, Coffee and Drupal Lover. I am working with Drupal for more than 10 years right now. And you can find me like Ruagi said, <laughs> Ruagi CR. Okay. This is my first international session, so. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about uh, what happening on Drupal frontend, introducing next Drupal, common use cases, and cool features. Okay, Drupal frontend. Is it good enough? It's a very good question nowadays, right? No. <laughs> when the web is evolving a lot, and basically we we are expecting a really great, uh, you know, ecosystem growing, growing in the JavaScript side. So it's a very good question right now for us as Drupal community. So some time ago, we did in the front end PHP template. Theme functions, hooks, CSS, JavaScript jQuery. Some years ago, we are doing <coughs> theme functions, hooks, CSS, yes, and jQuery. Right, so basically we changed from PHP to Twig, and it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was a great evolution, but we are still doing basically the same. So, yeah, we are using better tools, we are using, uh, you know, uh, Basically, the community is, is working hard in you know, improving the things, in, improving the experience, but we need to start you know, thinking about what is the future. So are we going to something better or are we going to do it to the same? The future for me right now is no jQuery, right? Yeah. So basically, we are putting jQuery on upside Drupal, yeah, finally. And it's fine, it's cool, but I think it's not enough, right? So, every, you know, everything is funny until you start seeing people leaving Drupal for look, looking for, you know, better developer experiences, better front end tools, uh, not getting outdated in the front end side, and basically that's very sad because we are losing goal opportunities for having real good people doing real good things in the Drupal core and the Drupal front end, right? So, warning, honest and painful opinions I it. Okay, this is the Stack, Stack Overflow developer survey for this year. So, popular programming and scripting language, this, this is not a secret, we know we are all PHP people, but <laughs> yeah, PHP is not very popular among well, there are developers, and that's fine, but uh, you know, let's see JavaScript, JavaScript is very popular right now, and it's continuously growing and growing, so, web frameworks, so, we are talking about the first two are Node.js and React, um, you know, yeah, query is still there. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But let's see Drupal. We are basically in the bottom. There are other options. We are not the, the last two ones, but we are, you know, basically very low. This is for popularity, right? So, love versus red. Scripting <laughs> and programming languages. Okay. JavaScript, uh, you know, basically there are JavaScript headers as well, so. It's fine, but uh, let's see PHP. So it's not so bad, yeah, I think, because basically there are still a lot of people loving uh, PHP. That's fine. But how about the frameworks? 
We're talking about Next.js, basically most of the people of Next.js, React, Node. What about Drupal? So, mm -hmm. Basically, I think in Drupal devs don't have time to improve service. <laughs> we are all using our time to continue improving the work, right? <laughs> That's me in the last four years. <laughs> so, it's not a secret, actually, Drupal is really good for a lot of things. It's, it's actually a great tool, and that's why we are all here, right? <laughs> uh, but we are, you know, the new modern front-end ecosystem is so far away in the front-end side. But we are still very good, and my opinion is we are better than a lot of hell CMSs out there. Much better. Because we have a lot of things that they are trying to, to create. They are trying to, to improve. We already have it. So that's something that probably not so much JavaScript developers now. So they are still using all the CMSs and paying a lot of money, uh, basically you know putting clients in there and not, uh, not using more than four content types to not get very built, you know, so uh, we are much better than, than those. I, I, it's my personal opinion. In a lot of things, structured data, flexibility, extensibility, probably not in the editor experience, but this is another topic <laughs> to talk about. I think we have to focus on that in the next years. So, what we choose to do, I, I think some some years ago we were talking about getting off the island, right? Uh, right now, I think we just need to embrace the web archipelago, right? We are not alone. We are not the only, you know, cool platform out there. We are not the only way to do frontend. So that's why uh, we think that the future of Drupal is us. We are actually think that this is true. So let's put the best of the, both worlds together. So let's use Drupal for what Drupal is the, be the better the option a client ca can have. And let's use other tools, right, for the front end and for doing the things that Drupal is not enough. So the result, no more and more other oh, developers. <laughs> the delight of what's experience is a win-win. So basically, I think that for years we were, uh, you know, doing benchmarking with WordPress. You know, I don't know why we thought that WordPress is our competitor. Or, you know, they have market, but they don't have enough to, to compete with Drupal. So we started looking AM and Cycle. Okay, well, let's see what is for. Uh, you know, enterprise CMS. Um, that's fine, okay, we, we did a really good effort as community to go there. But I think right now it's, mm, our real competitors are contentful, strappy, you know, basically all the, the, all the CMS is out there. So we, we just need to focus on that. So, let's introduce next Drupal. Chapter 3, uh, I've been working uh, in the last month, I think the last year actually, in putting together a lot of uh, good things that we can, you know, do with Drupal and with Next.js and trying to uh, attach all the strings we can and continue to do the, 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 the mood, so. Drupal, you know, all the good things we already know is API first, it's very important actually this change we did in Drupal 8 was I think was the first step for the feature. Uh, flexible data structures, secure, all extensible, hundreds of control modules and themes to improve and personalize editor experience, admin experience, specific use cases. We are very strong on that. Very, very strong on that. So, next year, okay, the most loved framework among front end developers right now. Yeah, performance is outstanding, actually. It's, it's insane seeing the, you know, the, the websites we can do with Next.js in the front end. 
uh, the image optimization is out of the box, internationalization, every uh, server side uh, generation, and basically the server side rendering as well. As well. On demand, um, uh, site validation, API routes, and the developer experience. This is very important. This is why probably Next.js is very popular because uh, the developer experience for front end developers is really good. Really, really good. Um, server config, uh, TypeScript support, building CSS support, a lot of good features out there. And basically, you can extend it, you can use take advantage of basically the whole React ecosystem uh, when you are working with Next.js. And Next Drupal uh, basically is the best of both. We are talking about inline preview, uh, instant publishing, multi-site uh, support, authentication, internationalization, support, support for web forms, search API, basically all the things we can create in Drupal. Uh, we can use it in next next repo. Uh, and the developer experience, basically, we are trying to make this easy for all the developers. So, how can we start using it? So, this is the part. When everything fails, so, let's see. Okay, I will be here. Copy pasting this. But we will need it. So let's talk about, or let's think we have a very good and popular food magazine called Umami, right? Mm -hmm. And we just want to start, you know, playing around with the couple. And we already have our content, content types, uh, menus, uh, is, uh, you know, multilingual site. You, have, you already have the search, basically, it's just to start playing around. So, assume that we are just starting with this. So, the first step is going to next Drupal, the door, and see what is this and how to start. So, you have the get started there. So, basically, you already have Drupal installed, so it's not necessary to install everything. So, we can start just, uh, Installing next Drupal. Can you merge the font, please? Yeah. <laughs> okay, go next. Okay, that's fine. Large. It might be more legible if you made it dark on light. I don't know if that's possible. Okay, on the fly, but. Let's see if we can do something here. Is it better? No? A little lighter. Just make it lighter. Yeah, let me check if I can do it. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Alright, so. Basically, oh, what is this? Okay, this is basically we, we just went to installing the module. Then there are a couple of patches that are very important <laughs> because it's about sub requests and the couple uh, router that uh, there are a couple of bugs that are not still not in the in the the code base. Uh, Basically, we just need to go there and and um, uh, just apply the patches. So okay, it will happen. That's why I think that basically this is the part that everything fails. <laughs> So, uh, ah, I know. It's because I just need to use Lambda, yeah. Yeah, the local version, it's 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's for the PHP version of the Mac. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. So we already have the patches, and basically it's just going and installing next Drupal. So we we need a couple of modules to be installed, next yes and next yes JSON API. Play for a while, can start seeing what is the. This is so important. So basically, uh, we need uh, the path analysis uh, configure for matching the, the next group of structures. So it's so important to do that. Okay, good. So we can go to. Patterns, we will put a content, pattern type, we will put articles, the title is for pattern, it's just for article, it could be in both languages, so let's call this just article. So that's it. So what's next? Okay, so I'm saying we we already have everything done in the Drupal site, so it's that easy to start. <laughs> and then we will create this. It could be, you know, you can create a structure inside the Drupal directory, and that's fine. Actually, is uh, you can use it as, as a mono repo, for example, or you can just create a separate project in a def separate repo, and it's fine as well. So. Let's just create a new one here. So this is the comment uh, for creating a, a, a next Drupal application right now. Basically, we'll be using the basic starter. Um, so this is my next. So. Just cross fingers for having a good internet connection and not getting a stuck there. Mm -hmm. Or you're generating that? Is that inside the thing? Uh, this is an XDL site, actually, yeah. Separated from the Drupal site? Yeah. yeah. Downloading the whole internet. Yeah. <laughs> So then we just need to configure the environment uh, variables. So let's see here. We already have the next years here. So let copy and paste. Um, let's rename this to local. And basically, we will need a URL in here. And here. Okay, and that's it. So basically, we can go and run this to start seeing what problems we can have. So, let's do this. Okay. Basically, you, you can just run yarn dev and you will start seeing what's happening. So, basically, it's this. You can use npm or yarn. And once you have this running, you will see that we'll have the first problem. Yeah, 
this is an error and basically it's because we are using Lando and we are using HTTPS so the way to fix this actually it's pretty easy this is why I talk about I will need this line <laughs> and this is just a configuration for you know ignore don't do this in production <laughs> and basically it's just for ignoring uh, the secure uh, thing so okay that's fine but we are still having errors and this is fine because uh, we are doing this in the existing site right it's not like the uh, Drupal out of the box uh, general, general distribution so uh, we have different things in here for example this is a uh, example code base just for sarin and we have like you know if we go for example and see what what is this articles we are trying to get okay we have the body we have the bio builder in there okay we have a few media image that is not in our code so we can go to pages and see okay this is this is cool this is using react components yeah so cool probably you will need this uh, much bigger okay um so this is basically where the magic start happening and this is the way we are getting the data from Drupal. So the first thing you, you can see we are using JSON API and you know there are a lot of things to do this and actually we are building uh, good developer experiences for JSON API as well and highly recommend to install JSON API extras, disabling everything and just starting enabling what you really need in the in the front end. Okay, so mentioning this here and this here. And let's see. So question here, the reason you're changing changing this is because the content types has different yeah, uh, it's because uh, basically this is like a basic seller for using Drupal, uh, a, a resin installed Drupal. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah, Drupal so basic exactly, article. and this is this is using like a image file inside of media, and mm -hmm. we we are just trying to fix this to see uh, you know some kind of travel sharing, not just doing the things in the way that they supposed to work, <laughs> and yeah, so. We already have this, but where are the images, right? It's not there. Uh, we can go here and see that, okay, what what, what it's using right now, this uh, index page is the node article teaser, so we can go there and see what is happening here. Okay, we are just trying to get the same uh, field image. That is different, so wow, another so <laughs> what happening? And this is fine, you know, the same you know, you know give in the when we start the presentation. Uh mm -hmm. basically uh, you can just see what is happening uh trying to lock what we have in the note. Right, so uh, you need to just refresh to get this, and here we go. So you can start seeing the JSON API structure in here, and that's why I'm recommending to use uh, JSON API extras and disabling everything because you have a lot of stuff here that you don't really need. <laughs> so Okay, we have the filling media image, that's fine, but it's a media, right? It's not the file. Okay. So we have here another fill media image that is basically uh, inside. So this is something we just need to remember to remove all the console logs, right? And We'll need this here. Um, I think I can't. 
this is fine because this is just validating that the fuel exists. That image component on line 31, it's a next? Yeah, this is exactly. This is the next yes, actually, you can see it in here. It's the next image, and basically, it supports uh, basically image optimization of the box, mm -hmm. and it does really great. So basically, everything is lazy loading. And everything. You, it, it's totally configurable, but uh, you know, basically, you you have uh, out of the box the responsive images and everything. So yeah, that's pretty cool. You can. As you can see, you can set a lot of things. This is responsive, uh, object fit cover, and a lot of stuff that usually you need you need to do using CSS. Uh, okay, this is fine. Um, something happening because it's not appearing. Okay, why is this happening? Basically, when you are using, and this is something that uh, we are trying to improve using uh, an art tool that I will be talking uh, in a moment. But when you include something like, uh, you know, it could be like a, a entity reference, a taxonomy, or something like that, you just need to put and then include. So, yeah, here we go. We, we already have the image there. Yeah, it's working, so. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That's why basically using Next.js, and this is very powerful, uh, you can have this slug that will be matching all the routes you have in Drupal, but in Next.js. So you don't have to create a new page for every page you already have. It could be like, a, you know, 3,000 nodes or something like that. It's insane. But having this slug basically and using the pattern uh, we we set with the article in Drupal, it will be matching this and we'll have all the articles in instantly, basically. So let's see. We have the same problem here that we are getting this field image, yeah. So let's change this for the same with it. And this is using another React component, I'm pretty sure. If we are in the article, using the node article component, uh, we'll have the same problem here. So, let's change this. Um, there are a lot of better ways to do this, right? <laughs> you can just, you know, create a variable for the image or something like that and avoid doing this uh, a lot of but uh, no. we are just trying to get this working and you know it's like a basic a starter, uh, template so and here we go well, we have this so we have our first decoupled site right now and is getting a collection of articles and you can navigate basically all the articles and that's it you we we just fix a couple of fields that were not working and yeah so this is pretty cool, actually, and, and it's powerful as well because, you know, it took me like, I don't know, uh, 10 minutes or less to have my first decoupled site in next years using Drupal. So, yeah, actually, it's, it's a thing. Um, yeah, there, there are other things. So, we yeah, create content. We already have content. So, uh, it's on. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, we have uh, another powerful thing, but we don't have enough time to do it. That is the preview mode. So you can just go to the next Drupal.org and follow the instructions and configure. This is very important because it's most like the real decoupled thing, creating consumers, roles, users for authentication, everything. It, this is just for having the, the inline preview in your Drupal as well. So. Once you have everything uh, configured, will be something like this. This is a site we'll be uh, releasing in the next weeks, I think. So just don't let the client that we are showing you this. Uh, but th this is a this is an inline preview that is very powerful. Actually, uh, this we are just using one site. But if you have 
different sites configured in, in your Drupal, you, you can change between, for example, uh, what uh, can I see in the tweak, in the real default uh, Drupal thing, versus what is in Next.js, but it could be several Next.js sites as well. So you can change between sites and see what, uh, how this content is looking in different sites. So it, it actually is pretty cool. Um, another important thing is you can navigate this. You know, um, basically, uh, okay, something's not working right here. Just let me check if I can see it in the... Um, oh yeah. Here it's because the configuration. I just got the database from production. So, uh, but yeah, here we go. So you can see that each time we navigate, it will be changing the Drupal page as well. And this is very powerful for the clients because uh, you can start navigating pages and say, oh no, uh, this this is not right, so I will be changing that. You will click edit and you will be editing the home page again. So yeah, that's not good. So we can just go and navigate and this will be syncing the preview with the real Drupal page. And then you can just click edit. And, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, take it to the right base to edit. Exactly. Oh, nice. Well, um, yeah. Smart. Yeah. So, basically, that that is the preview. So, let's continue. It was like a kind of small demo just to see uh, how this works and how easy it really is to configure something. If you already have a Drupal site running, you can just... You know, install the module, install the the sorry basic SR, changing some some stuff, and you can start playing around with the couple. Okay, so let's see, one more. Okay, so can you do it with next Drupal. This is very important because probably is the first thing when you start doing the couple. So. Notes, blocks, menus, views, paragraphs. Can we support that using the couple? Yeah, totally. Actually, you can use uh, every data structure you can create in, in Drupal that is exposed by JSON API. That's important, right? And uh, you can just uh, you know get it in index and show the, the data you want to show. So that's very cool. Multilingual, yeah. Actually, uh, for example. Uh, so here we have, uh, and this is pretty cool, you know, we have this demo that is the same Umami uh, profile, but this is totally built in Next.js. It has exactly the same look and feel, exactly the same functionality, so, and it's using everything Drupal out of the box. So you can see that this is a big article. And this is fast. Actually, this is live, right? This is not my local. <laughs> so, I'm really navigating the site right now. This is the real performance. So, I'm changing to Espanol right now. Everything is working fine. This is Search API, for example. Yeah. Chocolate. Yeah. This is search API, actually. Yeah. And it's fast. Yeah, it's fast. Yeah, this is the real power of Next.js. You know, you are giving your clients a really performant site and a really good developer experience for your teams as well. Can you show the search API code? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, you know, there is something better than showing the code. <laughs> we have a guide here in the guide section and a step by step for doing this one of them. So you can go here and see basically all the stuff you have to do for 
And we, we already have the, the code in, in GitHub as well. Everything is open source. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, this is, a, this is an open source uh, project. And you can go and see the, the um, let me check if I have it in here. Mm. Domain access is it pretty easy to? Domain access, uh, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, actually, I think it's not necessary, but if you already have it, well, it's something that you need to, to take a look at what is the best way to, to handle. Because you can just create sites that could be configuring in a specific domain, but out of the box, and this is, this is so important, basically, uh, out of the box, next year's for Drupal is built for B multi site. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the next year's, you will see you need to start creating sites. So basically, each time you create a new site, it will be really a, new, a really new site in the in you know it's like for having like a omni-channel tool, and you can create a lot of uh, sites or mobile applications or everything that you want to expose and have it there. Basically, you can configure in here. So if you are creating something from scratch and you don't have domain, uh, you know, yet, it's better to think in something like that. Because you can have the same Drupal instance serving a lot of different sites. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, basically, in GitHub, you you can you can look the examples. Uh, we have here the Umami. And yeah, everything is there. So you can just start digging uh, how to do this, how to do that. But we already have a lot of guides for that as well, as I said. So uh, how to do on-demand revalidation in an image, for example, if you want to take the WSI web field and you, your client is using a lot of images there. So basically, there is an example or a guide to that. Route syncing, links, web forms, redirects, search API is here, filter by site as well. So, yeah, you can just follow the guide and see uh, what is the way this is working. All right, and um, let me check uh, where to continue. All right. So multilingual content moderation, yeah, it supports content moderation. And actually, it's very cool because you can have a workflow, editorial workflow, and you can see in the inline preview what you are building. So if you, for example, need a, um, approval, you can send, and this is another feature that is very cool. Right now, you can create um, links for a specific page with a specific role and uh, you can set an expiration uh, date as well. So it could be just for today and tomorrow, and, and that's it. So you can get the page approved, uh, not seeing the content in Drupal, but real, really looking how it looks in the, in the final website. So that's, that's pretty cool as well. OK. Um, OK. So content moderation, yeah, roles and permissions, yeah. It supports a lot of permission. You can just define how, uh, you know, if a field uh, it's only visible for a certain role, yeah, it is possible as well. Multi site, yeah, you, you just saw that basically it's multi site out of the box. Web forms, yes, you can basically match your web forms using the web form API and using React forms, for example, uh, just for for match your web forms with the uh, React web form, for example. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. So search API, yeah. Uh, facility search, yeah, you can do it as well. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, actually, we, we use it in, in the site. If I don't have enough time, I can show you. OK, uh, features. This is the evolution of great tool. Basically, in the last three versions, we did a lot of work and we released some really good things, like the Drupal client. This is actually a client uh, for managing all the JSON API calls and everything in a better way. 
So you can just uh, get uh, collections, uh, you can just get a note, a view, a blog. So basically just put in Drupal that, get view. And with the ID and parameters, basically you can have this view working. Uh, custom authentication, serializer, feature, yeah, a lot of things. And in the next version, basically we have Drupal client stable with CRUD operations as well. So um, there are you know, very specific uh, use cases when you need to do a like. <laughs> and basically that changed everything because it's not just getting content, you need to send content back. And we have that specific uh, situation in one site and actually we started uh, building all the product operations for, for supporting that. And it, it's working really, really good. Uh, yeah, and the last one was the preview URL generators. Uh, I just talked about that. Basically, you generate, you choose the role, you choose the expiration date. And yes, in JSON Web Token, <coughs> so basically, it's, it's experimental right now. And there is a module, uh, the next next year module for working with uh, JSON Web Tokens. So, yeah, that's it. And yeah, it's built totally with uh, developer experience in mind. Actually, if you go to the site, here, this is my favorite part of the this landing page. Because it's, you know, everything that we are building for the developer experience. So this is the Drupal client we were talking about. So basically, you can use a lot of things this is get resource, for example, for getting uh, a note, or a blog, or something like that. Uh, you can create a resource as well. So basically, you can you can create a note. Um, you can have like a collection. For example, this is taxonomies. You can just get uh, the collection there, a menu, a view. Uh, you can use filters. Uh, the CRUD part as well, so you can update <coughs> resources, create resources, delete resources. Uh, this is for multilingual authentication and TypeScript. That's very good for front end developers, right? Yeah. I didn't catch the site. What's the site? Then? Oh. No. Next. Or, or, next dash Drupal. Or? Next that. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, oh, next dash Drupal dot org. Okay. Actually, we have some stickers there. I, and you can yeah. find the, yeah. Okay. And then you can read on And yeah, so that's uh, actually pretty cool. So we, we are building this with uh, two things in mind. One is the, you know, basically the, the client experience, what they are looking in the front end, and the other one is the developer experience. We, we want to, you know, have much fun in the front end. So. So yeah. I tried to tell us doing front end on Drupal is not fun or something? Uh, <laughs> when you are learning, the first 10 years, yeah. <laughs> but after the 15th year, it gets... Yeah, it gets bored, right? <laughs> it's okay. You can get bored, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's called it's the cold syndrome. <laughs> yeah, and um, the future, let's put it together. So this is open source, this is community, so we can just go there, start digging around, uh, put some tickets in GitHub, uh, you know, start talking about, uh, propose some so cool things that we can do together. So you can go there, and we are on the Slack, in the Drupal Slack, uh, is um, Next.js channel. Uh, we are in Drupal.org with the module, and we are in GitHub with all the open source as well. So thank you. Any other question? We are good. We are tired. We want to. Gentleman or Jesus here and ask, do you have any? Uh, are you going to do GraphQL uh, connectors later in life? Yeah, you can use actually the Next.js module with GraphQL, and it's fine. You can use the inline uh, preview and everything, and it's fine. But the uh, basically the package for the next uh, project uh, is not support for. for yeah, because the client and all that it's, it's not an API. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But you know, Jesus could do that actually. 
Jesus could take the, the Drupal client and do the support for GraphQL as well. There it will be very cool. There is an issue on GitHub. Someone is like, are you trying to support this? And then Arshad is like, look at the work that Jesus is doing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. yeah thank you. Is it real or a joke? It's real.